If someone had told me in the 90s that I could have pretty much every single Amiga game on my Amiga 600 for a few quid, I'd have bitten their entire body off. But that's the crazy reality nowadays, and just because I fancy doing something different, I'm going to rattle through a how-to video on how you can accomplish that. And I do mean rattle through, if you want a slower paced tutorial, you might want to go elsewhere because I ain't got no time for fools, sucker! Okay, so for this process you'll need either an Amiga 1200 or an Amiga 600, a compact flash card, in this case 4GB, or an SD card with a relevant adapter for connecting to the Amiga's IDE connection. In this instance I have this little all-in-one adapter which negates the need for a separate IDE ribbon. Now, to set up the flash card through your PC, you'll also need a suitable reader hooked up to it. You'll also need to download or obtain copies of WinUAE, which is the must-have Amiga emulator for Windows, a Workbench 3 or 3.1 disk image selection, a classic Workbench installation, and there are various choices each suited for different machines. My 1200 is pretty standard, so I'm going for the light edition, but there's also a version suited for Amiga 600 machines. A PFS3 Amiga file system handler information file. Now this isn't completely necessary, but it allows us to make use of a more up-to-date file system and can handle larger partitions better. You'll also need some kickstart ROMs and finally a selection of games. And just to make it easier, if you navigate to my website, you'll find all these items linked up and ready for download. So first things first, I'm assuming that your flashcard is blank. If it's already Amiga formatted, then you can skip to a later step. Otherwise, before WinUAE can partition your card, you need Windows to release its tight grip. So open an elevated DOS prompt by right-clicking Command Prompt and choosing Run as Administrator. From there, we can invoke a tool called Disk Part. Okay, so once Disk Part is open, we need to list Disk, and this will list all our drives. Now make sure you pick the right disk here by select Disk and then the number which applies to your flashcard. Don't pick the wrong disk because that will end in all sorts of trouble. Then uh, enter Detail Disk to make sure it's the right card, and enter Clean. And this will blank the drive completely, all partitions, everything. If you haven't installed WinUAE at this point, do it now! You'll also need copies of the Amiga ROMs I mentioned earlier in the WinUAE installation directory. Okay, with your flashcard in the drive, start WinUAE as an administrator, as we did with the DOS prompt. From there, under the hardware options, we can configure the system and select the processor, make it a bit of a quicker processor and remove cycle exact and give yourself a bit more extra uh, fast RAM just to make the whole process a little bit quicker. Make sure you go back and change the CPU emulation speed to fast as possible too, otherwise it can be a tad tedious. Select a disk image file for drive A and use the workbench installer disk. Then we need to add our file handler, so add a device name of F, drive name F, and add that PFS3 archive I gave you earlier, add that as the drive, and then we need to add our actual flash drive, so add hard drive, go to the drive which is the flash drive, which is there for me, so the only 3.7 gig drive I have, change the HD controller to IDE0, allow read-write functionality, and then click the add hard drive button and this will add both our drive and the uh, file handler as separate drives in the emulation. Click start and it will boot from our workbench installer disk which is in drive A and from there we can open HD tools and inside the HD tools drawer we have the HD toolbox. So open that and this is where we can partition our flash drive. Once it's loaded, you should see the drive appear. Click Change Drive Type and Define New to define the new um, drive. Reconfiguration, and this will set the drive up properly. Ignore all the minus details. It, it, you know, the Amiga isn't designed to support 4 gig drives originally, so it gets a bit confused, but it works fine. Click OK. Partition Drive, and we're going to set up a small initial partition for our system files. Say, yeah, 290 meg, something like that and the rest of the drive can be for our games. So, we'll rename this partition DH1 and the system partition DH0. 
we need to go to advanced options and add update and this is where we put a new file system in which is just a, a more modern file system and it can handle larger partitions so we put that on drive f's and because it's using the archive we can just specify the file handler in the archive and we need to change this dos type to a number applicable for this file handler so five zero four six five three zero three press enter and then click ok and click ok again and then we need to change the file system to pfs slash zero three and change this max transfer setting box to zero x one f e double zero press enter it's always you have to make sure you press enter in those boxes and then ok otherwise it won't save it do the same for the next partition So then we need to change the file system on that partition as well, like we did before. So click OK, then click OK again, and then we can go to OK again, and then save changes to drive. Now you might get this error with some USB card readers, and if you do, sometimes restarting Windows helps, sometimes it works better with an SD card and an SD card reader, because that's hardwired to the system's motherboard. Sometimes you can just get a new USB flash card reader and that will work better, but Windows just sometimes doesn't like it. Sometimes it's better just to put the drive in the Amiga and format it there. And there you can set up the partitions, you won't be able to use the new file system, so each partition will need to be less than 2 gigabytes to work properly. But that works and then you can come back to the PC uh, and use emulation from there on in. Of course you'll need physical workbench discs if you do that option as well. So once we've done that, either in emulation or in the Amiga, we can reboot and then we can go to right click on the disc and go to format disc and quick format each partition. Make sure you always use quick format. And then our second partition, we can do exactly the same. Format disk. Let's call this one games. Quick format. Splendid job. And there we have our drives and partition set up. There we go. Trash can. So now we need to add... Um, the classic workbench drive file so you click uh, add hard file navigate to the hdf which is in the zip file you download with classic workbench and we've set it up as a drive image eject both the discs and restart and it'll boot straight onto the classic workbench setup click return here press return again and it'll ask you to insert a workbench 3.1 disc not the installer one this time we have to use the standard workbench 3.1 disc which we can do by pressing F12, select image file, workbench 3.1, click OK, press return, yeah, retry, and it will find it eventually. And then it will go through a number of options which you can work through yourself, really. They're really just options to, depends on what machine you've got, but because I'm running this on quite a bog standard 1200, I wanted to set it up as quickly as possible. So you might want to use reduced color settings and uh, not enable additional features like copper backgrounds and stuff like that. And once that's done, it'll ask you to eject the workbench disk and reset the emulator and then you'll boot into the emulation. In the meantime, set up a folder and put the kickstart ROMs into it, into a separate folder, and then create a games folder with an, in that, and extract all the zip files into their own individual lettered folders within that games folder, like so. So we have A going into an A directory, B going into a B directory, and so on. Don't extract the zip files themselves within those directories, because each zip contains further zip files. We need to do that in the emulation itself to retain the file structure. 
Okay, then we can go back to the Amiga and select directory as a hard drive, and we need to add that folder containing all that crap we've just had made, so kickstarts and games, and we need to add that as device name PC, and volume label PC, and yeah, we don't want to restart emulation. Then click run down the bottom left and go to Dopus, which is directory Opus, and then on the left hand side list our uh, uh, classic workbench image we have still there, and on the right hand side select um, our new DH0 hard disk. Then we need to click all, which will select everything on the left hand side, and click copy, and this will copy everything over from the classic workbench hard file over to our new DH0 drive partition. Takes a little while, you know, this is why we need to speed the system up because every, otherwise we could be here for years, possibly decades. Okay, now we've got our files on our system partition and if we go to uh, that uh, our PC folder, which is uh, putting it in our directory on our PC and go to the kickstarts directory. We need to copy all the kickstarts over to DH0 devs kickstart. So we do the same thing again. Click all to overwrite anything which is there already. And then we need to copy our games file. So go to our DH0 drive now on the left hand side into our games directory. And on the right hand side select our games partition which is DH1. And then select all and then copy across that directory structure which exists there. Now we need to fill the games into those directories. So select the PC drive on the left hand side and navigate to folder 0. On the right hand side go to our games drive DH1 and the relevant folder so 0 to 9. And select all on the left and then click Arc Extract. And that will extract all the zip folders into that 0 to 9 directory. And then we can do the same for every other directory. So then we can click uh, Parent to go back and then go to uh, Folder A and then Parent on that side. Go to Folder A and then Arc Extract. Select all, sorry, Arc Extract again. You can pick uh, individual games if you want because you're going to run out of disk space otherwise. When that's done, remove every hard disk except for our flash drive which needs to be bootable. Now reboot, go to right click, uh, workbench, uh, startup and then assign and then we need to tell WHD load where the games are. So delete sys uh, games because they're not on the sys drive and change it to DH1 drive like so. Then it will look in the root directory of DH1. Click save, reset again, go to game, no go to files, go to add games and this will add the games to the WHD load menu. Then we're done, we can go across to our Amiga. Remove all the screws that you find on the bottom of the Amiga and flip it back over and unclip the top case and let's move the keyboard out of the way. Now you have to be careful with the keyboard connector. There's a little white clip, but you have to pull the top of a white clip up before you pull the keyboard connector out, otherwise it will damage it. Then inside the Amiga we can remove the hard drive bay, and hopefully you can just plop your uh, connector on top there. Sometimes you have to take all this metal casing out, but once it's done you can just put the uh, CF card in. Okay, once everything's back together, we can boot the Amiga, make sure there's no disks in the drive, and we should boot straight to the hard disk you have just created. Look at that. It's a thing of absolute beauty. Uh, right click uh, somewhere, go to run, and then go to games, and we will have da -da -da, the list of populated games. Isn't it beautiful? Pick one, and we can play till our heart's content and we're possibly dead on the floor. Enjoy, people! And of course, WHD load negates the need to swap disks. You can boot everything from the hard drive. It's absolutely amazing.
Thanks for watching this how to video. If you'd like to see some more in the future, let me know what you're looking for. If you wouldn't, let me know that too. Click another video below, contribute to my Patreon, or just leave. In any case, thank you for watching and good night.